Welcome back to Japan, where today I'll be listening to more of one of the best bands I've heard in a very long time, uh, Wagaki Band. Obviously, as you guys know, if you've been following this, I've really enjoyed their songs thus far. Um, and I just love the fact they've been fusing so many different styles with traditional Japanese instruments. So, you know, two things I really like, you know, sort of modern pop and rock tropes, along with uh, traditional Japanese instruments, which in my opinion are the most beautiful sounds that you can get anywhere in music. Um, and they've pretty much gone four for four with me so far. I've listened to four of their songs um, to varying degrees. I've loved them all from at least two of them, I'd say, are just like amazingly, irreplaceably good. And the other two were at least just, you know, good listens. Um, so today I'm going to be listening to Tengaku, um, which has been actually recommended to me. Uh, I, I did put it on my list before it was recommended to me, but it has since been recommended as one I should listen to. Um, it says Tengaku. Tengaku Vocaloid, though, and Vocaloid is like a, a, a vocal effect uh, that many of you might be familiar with. It goes back quite a while, but many people associate it with the sound of like a, a auto tune. It has that sort of very processed sound. I don't know why they would put that in the title of a song. It seems rather strange, well, at least in the title of the video as we see it here. And interesting enough, it seems to go very much against a lot of the things that I've heard from them before, with a very sort of genuine purist sound but i'm i'm not anti-production so i mean i might be totally off the mark maybe there's no vocaloid in it at all and it's just some sort of lyrical commentary on vocaloids or a hate song against vocals i don't, I don't know but i'm just interested to see that in there so that sort of set my expectations in a slightly weird place with this but as i say they've gone four for four with me so far so when it comes to this fifth song even if I don't like it, and you guys know I'm not I'm not one of those people who just likes to say I like everything, I like to go in and you know, analyse it, and especially for like a band like this, who if I really like them, I set the bar higher, and if I'm really enjoying them, I set the bar higher and try to be more critical looking for things that perhaps I don't like in their music, just to you know, make the commentary worthwhile, rather than me just sitting here going, hey, I love that all the time. So, I mean, even if I don't like this song, they're still on an 80% high with me, but um, maybe I will like it. I'd be surprised if I didn't. This song is a whole five minutes though, so I better jump in now. Let's not leave it too long. Here we go, this is Tengaku. Just hit my hat. Treading a more traditional route than normal, I'm sure it's about to kick in. sounds so brilliantly it's just so evocative you know so much atmosphere and yet rocking <laughs> we're not really hearing vocaloid but let's get past that point <laughs> I mean, the melody is just beautiful. <laughs> Kicking your 
guitar. You know, the simplicity of the video actually works a lot. Black background and everything, because they have beautiful backgrounds in a lot of their videos, but on this one you can really just concentrate on how connected the band are with all of their members. Oh, I say that. <laughs> Tengaku, oh, okay, I get it now, I get it. Well, I don't get the vocaloid bit, that didn't come up anywhere in that. But let's, let's get past that point, that seems rather irrelevant now. Um, all right, first things first. <laughs> yeah, that, that is pushing near maybe being my new favorite by them. That's very, 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 very close to the one that I like most of all before, which is the one I heard first. Um, uh, basically, it translates as Fowls and Cherry Trees, Send on that, who cares? Um, anyway, yeah, what a fantastic song. Uh, I love the intro, um, and the way it came in, you know, sounding totally like traditional Japanese music. And then when it finally uh, kicked in, they still kept that um, essence. Whereas with some of the other songs, like Synchronicity, they've played with mixing with other genres like uh, jazz, and some of them they've gone for more of a rock sound, like the last one I heard, which I can't for the life of me remember the name of that song. It's not on my screen anymore, sorry. Um, so I, can't, I can't remember what that was, but they, they've played with mixing a few genres. This one did just seem to be um, kind of like that, just Japanese music played, uh, traditional music played for a sort of a hyper-kinetic sense. I did like, like I said, the video was uh, simple enough. That, whereas a lot of them, they have that beautiful settings. This one, just having it on a black background, there is enough going on with the band that they can themselves just make an entertaining watch just by being you know just by doing what they do this this so kinetic um before i get into too much more i'm gonna i'm gonna do the like i said the bar's set really high over these guys so it's hard for me to criticize them i'm gonna come back to the same thing i always do and i know people have said they've more recently grown out of this but i can't get i can't i can't get my head around that visual k look i love the traditional japanese stuff they're doing and i know i'm gonna just sound like some uh you know old old boy foreigner who doesn't get it but, you know i mean i i can't get my head around that visual k look i just I, like when you got like this long overdone haircut, which looks like you spent ages doing, but then you're pulling a moody face. It's like, I mean, no one needs style tips from me, but I'm just looking at it thinking you can't do that with a straight face. You can't look moody and serious when you've got like this ridiculously over the top haircut. And there's also the guy who seems to have like a million piercings through his mouth. And I'm just sort of thinking to myself, Jesus, don't get too close to a, don't get too close to a magnet. And <laughs> Yeah, no one wants to hear my style tips, so I'm going to skip over this. But yeah, I, 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 I never get, I never get that um, whole thing. But I think one of the things that musically, getting back to the music, one of the things that made this so musically interesting was, um, uh, as a voice, well, well, actually one of the best things in a, a band is when they get all these sounds together. It's the way that they fuse them. Um, 
some people might, I know there's some people who don't so much like that sort of thing who might actually find this messy. And I was thinking, when I heard this one, when I was listening to this just now, I was thinking, I can see how some people would find this quite a messy song, quite difficult to follow, just too much happening at once. So you have to kind of like that sort of thing. And as I've said before, I'm, I'm more than willing to accept anyone who doesn't like this band uh, as much as I have so far, because I can see why it wouldn't be for everyone, but it just plays to the things I like. And I, I like those very kinetic arrangements if everything works, to me, it has to, it has to be a sense of connection. And one of the good examples of that was there was a solo halfway through. I mean, the whole song worked, but a good example for me, there was a, a solo halfway through where the shakuhachi did a solo, the Japanese flute, and then the guitar did a short solo as well. Both, they both packed each other up while they were playing, but then took the forefront for their little bit. And then they both finished with a little stab, uh, like a da 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 and you're hearing the guitar stabbing alongside the shakuhachi, and it just worked perfectly. It was perfectly delivered. There was a little bit of a, a wisp on the end of the shakuhachi note as well, while the guitar was giving more of the impact. There was, the note was rolling off better from the shakuhachi, and just, just, just that whole thing worked together beautifully. Um, the drummer, as usual, I don't talk about the drummer enough, but the drummer does a fantastic job of implementing some really interesting rhythms that sort of take that. Um, I, I know it's more complicated than this, but you know, that sort of taiko rhythm, Japanese drum style rhythm, and put it into the context of, um, you know, the sort of rock drumming. Um, just everything about that was really interesting. It worked. It didn't, um, it didn't perhaps stretch far outside of what you'd expect from them. But I think that we've already seen enough experimentation in the first few songs. I mean, this is, what, the fifth song I've heard by them now? Um, we've already heard enough experimentation that I'm certainly not saying, oh, they have to show more variation. They're showing fantastic variation so far on what they've done. But um, this, to me, was probably a good example of what they, along with the first one I heard, this is a, an example of, like, a quintessential example of what they do and why it's so good and how fantastic it is. And just with every song, they just cement the fact that they are very fantastic musicians and fantastic with their arrangements the arrangements are pinpoint like spot on every time you listen to it and you just go yeah that's what you've done there that's clever that's cool um uh, but yeah one thing i will say i mentioned this before um and i should have come back to this uh, earlier but i did mention it during the song the thing that really struck me about this was the melody was fantastic in fact there was one bit i was more than willing to accept it so i think it turned out to be like a pre-chorus the arrangement is so complicated i can't really remember exactly how everything went but one bit i was happy to accept it as the chorus i was like wow this is really catchy and it turned out it was a pre-chorus and then like the actual chorus came in i was like wow there's so much good melody stuff going on in this song as well so, you know, they got the arrangement, they got the details, they got the twiddles, they got the atmosphere, they got the mood, they got the musicianship, like I was saying, they got the melody, just everything about it is great. Um, and I can't wait to come back to more of their music, and I will be doing so soon. In fact, uh, I've got a couple more already lined up to check out. But for now, from Japan, I'm going to stop waffling. Thank you so much, as always, get in the comments, tell me what you think. I've had some suggestions from you guys by this band. This was one of them, and I will be checking out more uh, songs by Wagaki Band that you guys have suggested. But for now, until you want to see me again in Japan, which you can do anytime by watching the old videos or subscribing, until then, or now, or whenever. Ciao.